Welcome back to Low Buck Garage. Today, I'm going to give a little bit of attention to this old half track. I've had it for over a decade, so it's time to finally do something. Let's see what we can do. The first thing I noticed right off is this whole section of the yard is way too yellow. Yellow forklift, yellow Jeep, yellow half track, another yellow half track, pretty much a yellow building, just too much yellow over here. There's just too many yellow vehicles here. That's got to change. Now you may notice there's no windshield here. Someone just cut it off. Uh, so before I paint it, I probably should address that. I do notice there's a windshield right here. So uh, this one's not using the windshield. Let's steal it. These windshields are not meant to be this vertical. They're actually supposed to lay back quite a bit. Uh, someone cut this one, bent it upwards, and welded it. You can see where the bends are. And particularly on the center section, let's see if you can see that. This angle is supposed to go straight up. That's how much it's bent. So we're going to fix that too. Nothing on this vehicle is light. Huh. A little trimming, it should be good. I had to start off aligning this windshield frame somehow, so the first way I did it was wrong. What I did is I noticed there's a flat surface up on top of the windshield frame and another flat surface at the cab corner. So I figured we'd just go and make a nice straight line and uh, connect the two. So this is braced up nicely. It's all very secure, it's all very flat. And you can see where this angle runs into that angle. This one is a steeper angle. That one goes up more vertical. I think you can see it better over there, where that one comes up at more of an angle, and then it goes straighter. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the vertical height here, and um, make sure it's the same on both sides. Now I cut this off right about on the bottom corner, so when that gets flush, it probably will be right, but I want to make sure it's about the same on both. Well, I ended up clamping a piece of stock to the match the angle on the bottom and then make the angle on the top fit and uh, just loosened up this clamp here supporting it till I got it to match the angle. Everything is uh, fitted into place here close enough so I'm about ready to weld it up and uh, hopefully I can weld before that does anything bad. Still not much. Almost well the door shut. That would have been bad. She's in there. Uh, looks like the line looks fairly straight. I think I'm pretty good. Uh, I'm going to tidy up the welds a little bit and uh, call this an installed windshield. Obviously no glass or anything, but you know, I didn't have any to start with, so we're okay. Got it done just in time. The rain will cool the welds down nicely. Luckily, there's not a whole lot of stuff to mask off in this cab. Um, pretty much everything you get painted. Uh, I'm taking off the data plates. That's the original color. 
We're going to get closer to that. Now, I probably should empty the glove box. Uh, there's stuff. Wires, switches. A full roll of duct tape. That probably isn't good anymore. Oh, valve lever. Doesn't go to this, but it looks handy. One of these little rubber gaskets. I don't even know what they're for. But there's a pile of them. Looks like we're pretty much empty there. Excellent. I already removed my fuel system before I started making sparks. And this is my whole fuel system. Boat tank in the passenger seat spot, electric pump laying on the floorboard, rubber hose to the carb. That was it. That's the one power wire that ran the fuel system. And we'll just tuck that up here somewhere. Might need that later. I don't know. Might revise the fuel system. We'll see what I end up doing. Oh, there's burnt marks in it. It's always a good sign when your wires have burnt marks. Maybe I will be revising this fuel system. For now, we're just tucking it out of the way. There's a strange assortment of lights back here. I'm just removing them. Those are gone. There we go. Definitely use these later on something else. Or maybe this. Luckily, someone had the foresight to smash the glass out of the gauges and paint them yellow. So I feel absolutely no obligation at all to mask them off in any way properly. Uh, pretty much the extent of my masking here I'll take this off. Now, anyone will tell you the key to a good paint job is proper prep. And it's time to do that step. Um, I'm using a paint, it's a lusterless, uh, military style paint. And um, I've already tried it out on my $50 paint job experiment. And that Jeep still looks good. So I also know that even though prep is important, that paint covers a lot of sins. And I really don't like doing prep because, you know, it's kind of boring. And this is a big vehicle and there's lots of it. And I don't want to do it. So I'm going to compromise. We're just going to do a quick once over. Knock the loose stuff off. We're good to go. As much as I love the old slow-moving vehicle triangles here, uh, they're pretty flaky. For the sake of a professional looking paint job, I really should get rid of the stickers. When you're doing this kind of detailed prep work, you start noticing flaws in the vehicle you hadn't seen before. And this is the time to take care of them. Like I noticed, I've got pine needles jammed in the fender, between the fender and the body. So uh, I'm gonna actually take them out. Oh, there's another one. Yeah, it's this kind of attention to detail that really makes the difference. Notice there's one stud broken here. The reason for that is not because these studs are bad. I bet the reason that's broken 
is because of that little L stamped on the end of the stud. That means left hand thread. So if you want to loosen this bolt, you turn it in the tightening direction. That's common on things that are from the 60s and earlier. I always have to watch for the little L because it means go the other way. And you'll see a lot of broken studs because of it. Gotta make sure all the loose stuff's off. They can get rid of the mud and the spider webs. Let's shoot it in the morning. It's the next morning, and now in the daylight, I found a few more things I gotta take care of. So I'm not ready to spray. The prep work continues. These rollers didn't get cleaned because they actually trapped dirt. So I'm gonna take an air hose to them. The hose didn't get all the spider webs off. There we go. That's better. I've decided to go the extra mile and mask off the steering wheel because uh, it's kind of an interesting olive drab color. It does have yellow paint on it, but um, I'm going to try to leave as much of the original color as I can when I can find it. Hopefully you can read that label. I uh, got this stuff off eBay. It is the 34052 Forest Green. Not quite olive drab, but really close, and I kind of like it a little better. Uh, got the leftover one for my $50 paint job experiment, and I've got one more gallon. I have no idea how much this thing's going to take, and uh, I'm not going to reduce it any because I just realized I'm out of thinner. So uh, hopefully this sprays full strength. But I did buy the cheapest spray gun I could find. Um, and then I'm also wearing my old painting glasses, which are half covered in old paint. So um, I could kind of see. Basically, we're all ready. We're gonna see how bad of an idea this is. Saran wrap's see-through, right? We'll see how the clarity of the video is with that. Perfect. That should do something.
Now when you're not doing a restoration, it frees you up to do a little bit of different stuff. I definitely don't want yellow lug nuts, but uh, I think black will be better than this, the green. Give it, give it a little dash of color, sort of. Same thing with the headlight buckets. Uh, those are the backlights. I decided they're going to be headlights, so that's what they are now. Now I've let this dry for a full day, and uh, I kept some paint left over. Made sure I didn't run out, uh, because I knew there's going to be touch-ups. Now, one thing I knew for sure is these wheels. There's no way I was going to be able to spray those complete. I'm going to have to roll it forward so they turn so I get the uh, other sides, which I could not do when the front tire's off. So, I just put the front tires on. Now I feel safer. You can see I rolled it around, but there's some spots that are still, uh, you can see the yellow through it. So I only put two lug nuts on. I'll hold a piece of cardboard and spray that. Um, there's a few other things. I knew some spots are going to be missed because anytime you do a vehicle this big, little stuff like you can see on the side of the screw head there. Inside. I missed right around that hinge where it was facing me. Some spots back here. I was planning on touching those up anyway because I knew I had to do the wheels. So I didn't worry about it too much. I'm just going to go over all the little nooks and crannies. Little things I missed here and there. And uh, we'll get this all taken care of. I'm going to have to move this a little bit at a time to get those wheels. Because of course all the wheels are different sizes. The little ones down at the bottom, the drive wheels, and the front tires, all different diameters. So half a rotation to get to the other side is going to be on different on every one. So I'm going to need to move it a little bit at a time. Luckily, I have a tow tug. And uh, I'll just use the winch and ooch it along as I paint. Apparently I didn't clean out the tops of these wheels very well. So now they're on the bottom, I can get to them easier. Luckily, since all this paint's dry, I can just air hose it off and it'll be nice and clean. Got a tiny little bit left in the bottom. I'm going to use that to brush on this outer wheel edge. Because for some reason it's glaringly obvious and I can't spray it easily without getting the tire completely. Got exactly one gun full of paint left. So I'm going to hit the most visible areas first. I don't know if I'm going to make it all. I found a few things though that are kind of half track specific. And a lot of it has to do with the tracks. 
This suspension is down low and pretty complicated. Someone painted the back side of it uh, and on both sides here. This just seemed weird. That's it. I'm completely out of the green paint. Uh, I've got a tiny little dribble in the can that I could probably use with a brush to get a thing here and there, but not enough for a gun. So, I'm done. At least as far as that goes. Uh, I'm going to see how much I can do with rattle cans as far as any trim. Definitely need to do something with the boom, so I'm going to do that all just rattle can black. Uh, but i got to lower it down so I can actually get to it. I always enjoy the taking the tape off part. There we go. That's better. Let's see how these lights I found on the back work as headlights. It's not half bad. Yeah. Looks good enough. Now it's got a face. A face that kind of says, I eat hybrids for breakfast. That kind of face. Interesting. Now for years, I was doing this project wrong. I just couldn't get myself motivated to work on this. I wasn't having fun with it, and uh, it was just a tool to be used. But now, by painting it first, I'm a little more motivated to actually work on it. I actually want to get this all working properly now. And that's something to keep in mind. If you don't have motivation on a project, do something first that gives you motivation. Like, uh, 
give it a new look. And now I find myself taking glances at it as I walk by to try to figure out what I want to do to upgrade it. That's a good place to be. That makes me want to work on it. Even though this is the stopping point for today's video, you'll see more on this. I'm going to keep going a little further. So I'll keep having fun with this. Hope you guys are having fun with your projects. We'll see you next time.